said he swept me off my feet. Welcome back. Um, we're going to be talking about municipal politics. My guest in this segment is John Trelevin of the Grumpy Taxpayers. I think that's the whole name. Uh, Grumpy Taxpayers of Greater Victoria, yes. Grumpy Taxpayers of Greater Victoria. I've heard John on the radio a fair bit and was kind of interested in what they're talking about. So away we go. So John, the first question is, why do municipalities and municipal governments matter so much? Oh, they matter because uh, in the end, well, people live in municipalities. Uh, people earn their living in municipalities. The economy that exists at the municipal level is the economy. The, the, the economy of British Columbia is a statistical presentation of what happens in cities, towns and municipalities where it happens first. An economy is about transactions. They happen at the municipal level. And uh, if you take it to another Take, take it to another extent, um, all tax revenue starts its life as a business transaction. Those business transactions happen at the municipal level. So it is the most important level of government and it has the least funding options, which True. is really a problem. I mean, I don't know the numbers, but something like 8% of the tax revenue accrues at the municipal level. So give a moment's thought for people who are elected to municipal councils who step forward that's courageous and are chosen by the people then find themselves responsible for the municipality the safety the conditions the bylaws uh, the school systems that located I mean it, it, it is our community and then when they want to do something they don't have the tax points uh, it's very, very challenging. And they are dealing in a governance model that doesn't work across the province. I, we would argue as grumpy taxpayers. By the way, grumpy taxpayers are all in favor of taxes. Oh, okay. we do, we're grumpy when the monies get kind of wasted or when the governance model, 13 municipalities sharing one economy, all that overhead stays in place long after it was necessary. As we know, Greater Victoria is a collection of organic communities that are over time growing together. Yeah. Uh, now I'll just say mm -hmm. that myself, I, I'm not necessarily opposed to 13 different communities, yeah. just, just to make that clear. Uh, yeah, and nor am I. Okay. But I'm very much opposed to 15 different fire departments, uh, 15 different parks and recreations departments, five police forces for 415,000. No, no, no. Hey, I live in Sydney. I love the small town environment. I love the, and, and guess what? I have the privilege in Sydney of living beside North Saanich and Central Saanich where we've got the ALR. I don't have to go to the Napa Valley for a winery. And anyway, the, the different lifestyles that are possible across Greater Victoria are of course in part a function of the 13 municipalities. But do we really need five police departments for 415,000 people? The answer is absolutely not. And does that cost money? I'm not talking amalgamation now, but service integration. I think as yes. a taxpayer, that's what we can demand. And it's a, it's a challenge. Well, if we, let, let's, I, I don't know if, if police amalgamation is, mm -hmm. makes sense or not. I've just never really given it any thought. But. I'll defer to, to mm -hmm. what you, because you have studied it, I, I guess, or at least looked into it. If we want it, do we want it? I mean, do we even know if we want it? It's something that gets discussed, but, and if we don't know, why don't we know? Okay, so in the last, previous election cycle, uh, there were on, with, uh, within the 13 municipalities, in most of the local elections, there was um, uh, a question that revolved around amalgamation. Right. Now there were different questions, and that you know, all right. but generally speaking, the sentiment uh, was in favor of studying amalgamation. I'd put it the same way as the results in the, in the federal election. No matter how the most recent federal election, no matter how you cut the numbers, most Canadians voted in favor of some action on climate change. Yes. Maybe different parties, different perspectives, different initiatives, but generally speaking. Okay, so now what did the province of British Columbia do? Faced with 
across this or across the, the, the CRD a general interest in studying studying amalgamation. The previous government uh, set aside ninety thousand dollars, hired consultants, and did a study of services, service and governance integration study. So, for example, police departments. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's a brilliant report. It doesn't make recommendations because they were told not to, but it lists all of the the multiplicity of service delivery agencies across the. The previous government, having received the report, didn't publish it. Why not? Oh, there was going to be an election. Remember Kim Campbell? An election campaign is no time to discuss but policy. But whether there's going to be an election or not. No, but but yeah, they, didn't, they didn't. The okay. good news is that the NDP government, when they came in, they did release it. Now that report had been, it's well written, and it had been uh, subject to uh, council meetings across the 13 municipalities, wide consultation. We grumpies actually were asked to meet with one of the consultants. Not one municipality has tabled the report for discussion. Not one. It never was tabled by the CRD board. Now this is not amalgamation. This is just service integration. And so the question is, well, what's, why is it such a hot potato? Uh, I think you can understand that there are a variety of reasons. These are difficult issues. Uh, but who's being left out? The taxpayers. The taxpayers. I prefer to call us the citizens, but, but yes, but, okay, the, the citizens, the taxpayers. Yeah. Um, when you say we're being left out, well, I mean, I didn't even know this report was published or anything. Well, I, it, I know it, nothing. Yeah, but it, it's there. It's yeah. a matter of public record. But the, the previous government didn't even want to publish it. And uh, as I say to the credit, the current provincial government did. did but but nobody's, no, no, nobody's taking it up and saying, oh, hot potato. Well, you know, I can understand why, except this is a very expensive way to deliver, let's say, parks and recreations when, services when there are 14 parks and recreations departments, if not more. This is for 415,000 people. Anyway. Grumpy Taxpayers of Greater Victoria is not a foundation. We don't hire economists. We don't try to publish learned papers. We assume that the, uh, the public servants and the elected officials across the, the CRD have got the brain power to come up with alternative forms of, because they can answer questions. We try to spend our time formulating questions. As for example, when, uh, well, as for example, when there was a proposal around to, uh, for Victoria to ho host the next Pan Am Games in whatever it was, 2000. I remember that from a couple yeah. of years ago. Uh, we questioned that and we said, uh, well, what's the budget? And when there were about six different budget were, budgets were produced by David Black and his colleagues. And uh, at no time did he address security costs. The feeling across the community was, well, we made money last time, right? Remember in 94, we made money. One of my colleagues went and saw, found the auditor's report. Nobody made money on that show. What happened was $20 million of government grants of one kind or another were left unspent. It was not a profit. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, now, <clears throat> just as an example of how vulnerable we are in the current governance model, as he was proposing the, the games, and I mean, it's his right to do so, and it was a very proud moment for Victoria, for Victoria no question about it, and, and international athletic games are really important, I got that. Um, the CRD, which is only a committee, now it's, on its website it says it's regional government, it isn't. It's a committee. It's just a committee uh, to coordinate administrative, you know, support services across the region. It seems to have the ability to make well, major Well, here's the point. They met in camera to receive David Black's proposal and discuss it. And then they passed a resolution, which was, it, was, it wasn't a ringing endorsement, but it was encouraging uh, to go ahead. You know, we'll, we'll let us see more. And... Uh, they were looking at a $25 million contribution from the CRD and then hundreds of millions of dollars from federal government, provincial government. 
And as you know, one of the first acts of the then new Minister of Finance was to say that the British Columbia government didn't have $400 million to contribute to the enterprise. So How about 400 million, that was BC. And, and this is without security, but anyway, that's another story. Uh, we went to uh, the, the CRD and we said, could you please give us the documentation you used to come to the decision that it was a good idea to proceed with the games? Jack, they gave us 318 pages of fully redacted material. When you say fully redacted I mean material. fully redacted, everything black. So there was 318 pages of black? Yeah, you could see letterhead, you couldn't see any content. And as a friend of mine in Toronto said, didn't the CRD understand the cost of toner? So what we, was your question again to the what, CRD? I, well, I want, we wanted to see the documentation that, that the CRD board, elected officials had used to reach the decision to endorse the project. And you got 318 blank pages. pages. All redacted. Now, I hate to say it, but to me, that sounds typical of the CRD. That's well, and just that's the way they always do things. So it's, it's crazy. So what we did was we lodged a complaint with the provincial ombudsman. And their first response was, well, the games got canceled, so we won't bother looking into it. But about that's a month... That's not a very good about, answer uh, Exactly. But a month later, to their credit, they came back and said, no, we're going to take a look. And they produced a report, which was somewhat crit highly critical, actually, of, the, of the, uh, the, the way the CRD had proceeded with an FOI request. Now, this is all very complicated and stuff, but all we're really seeking is accountability, transparency, and predictability. The Pan Am Games example, though, is an example of what happens when you have 13 municipalities, 91 elected, politicians across a population of only 415,000, it's vulnerable. It's fragile. Well, you know, I don't know if it would be any better if we had one city here and, uh, I mean, it just seems to be the way they do things. At, well, at, but, but they are we. Well, I, I don't think they are we. They're supposed to be we. Yeah. But okay, and they and are something else. Well, to, to take your point, uh, some long time ago, I was driving and listening to a, a radio station in Victoria and uh, a then mayor of a major municipality in this community said in, in, in response to a question on air about the CRD, said, well, the taxpayers of, of Greater Victoria aren't represented at the CRD. We as grumpy taxpayers figure that an agency that spends $750,000 a day has to represent one way or another the taxpayers. The problem is, and, and this, is, look at, this is not critical, the individuals are doing the best they possibly can in the circumstance. But here you've got a municipality that's got something like a, a, a regional government. There are no regional elections. Right. No one gets elected on, on, a, on the vision, on the basis of putting forward a, uh, a vision of what, where this, one of Canada's largest cities, by the way, at 415,000 people, should go, yeah. and how it yeah. should get there. Well, it's, very, you know, it, it's a very difficult situation. I I first started dealing with the CRD, Jesus, thirty years ago, yeah. almost thirty years ago. Well, they're and fifty years old at this. Yeah, thing, fifty-one, fifty-two. And the issue was water and water quality. Yeah. And what I found out, I mean, what I came to believe was that a lot of them had no idea of what was going on because they have so many things they're dealing with. And they turned their back on the citizens who wanted input and trusted their staff. And somehow we, the citizens, became the enemy. And I mean, it was just like the, the redact, everything was crazy. Well, and, and that, that's, that, that's what we think. I mean, I don't know. And we're out of time. That, Okay, well, <laughs> there you are. But John, it, it, you're going to have to come back up. We'll carry on this conversation. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're it, and you're not very grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. Heartache and trouble every day. Heartache and trouble.